Today we are going to be talking about user defined objects and this is a part of the information technology grade 12 CAP syllabus. Now in this lesson which is part one we're going to first of all look at what is an object and follow that up with what are the things that we can put into our objects and then we're going to show you how we can create one and some of the things that you can put in an object is an attribute or attributes and we will start off by putting attributes into the object that we create. Let's take a fo the following scenario. Let's say we want to create a game where we are playing against zombies. Now, if you think about a zombie, we are probably going to need to store information about the zombie and things like the life points of the zombie, how the zombie looks like, uh, the height and th maybe the color of the zombie and stuff like that. So there's lots of information that we're going to have to store about the zombie. And as I start to think about this, I'm starting to realize that I'm going to need a lot of variables to store all this information for my, for my zombie. But there also, it's not just information that I want to store about the zombie. I obviously want my zombie to do certain things. I want them to be able to walk or attack or fall. And if I want to do this in a computer program, I'm going to have to create some sort of functions or procedures that do this. And I can see there's going to be quite a lot of things that I want the zombie to do. So it's going to end up being a lot of subprograms, a lot of these functions and procedures. And now I'm starting to think, well, obviously my game's going to have more than one zombie. So for each zombie, I'm going to have all these variables again and again and again, and all these functions and procedures and again and again. And I'm starting to feel very overwhelmed by all these variables and all these subprograms. And I'm starting to feel like we're actually being attacked by a group of zombies, which actually can be quite scary. But don't fear, there is a way around this in Delphi, and that is by using what we call pr uh, objects. Now, as I said, we are going to, instead of having these tons of variables and subprograms, we're going to start using objects. Now, you might ask yourself, what is an object? Well, an object is what, what they define it as a class or a template of that contains certain variables or functions or procedures. Now, the variables that are in a class or object, uh, we tend to call them attributes. And the things or the actions that that object does um, which could be functions, it could be procedures, it could be other things. We tend to call these the methods of our object. Now, you're starting to get a bit um, scared now, like I don't like learning new things. But you might have not realized that you've already used objects before. In fact, in your very first program, when you dragged something to your form, let's say a button, uh, that button was actually an object that was already designed for you in Delphi. Because if you think about it, you were changing the, the button's name, you changed its caption, maybe you changed the height or the width property of that um, button, and those are all that, that object's attributes, the button's attributes that you were changing. And then you did things for when the, the button got clicked or, or there are certain events that that button triggered and these were the functions and procedures or the methods that that object can use. So we've already used objects. The only problem is if I want to design my game in Delphi, um, there isn't a zombie object for me to use. Well, that's okay because we're going to actually create our own objects now. Instead of just using the ones that Delphi gives us, we're going to be able to create our own ones. So let's take the following scenario. Let's take a dog show registration system and we're going to register dogs. Now obviously we're going to have to have a lot of variables, story information about dogs. We're going to have a lot of uh, functions and procedures. So to simplify um, my, ob my program, I'm going to actually store those details. Instead of storing each and every dog's details in, in variables, I'm going to store them in its own object. Now again, Delphi does not have a dog object and we're going to create an object for our dogs. So the type of information, it's, uh, this requires a bit of planning. We need to think what are we going to want to store in our object? Well some of the things that I'm going to want to store is that obviously these are the attributes are the, let's, let's consider that put in the name of the dog, let's put in the age of the dog, and let's put in the weight of the dog. Now obviously there's tons more information I can add, I could put the breed and so on, but just for this scenario we're just going to keep it nice and simple. You can always add those extra attributes later. So these are things that we're going to want it to do. Now, um, these are the information we want to store. Now, we also want to do certain things for each and every dog. We're going to probably have to work out what category um, the dog uh, is. Maybe it's a small breed or so on. Um, and we're also going to work out the entrance fee. And these all going to fall under the methods. So determining its category, calculating the entrance fee. These are actions that my object will, will, will do. So these will fall under the methods. 
So with that, we're going to actually go to our program. Oh, ironically, we have a picture of two dogs there. These are my two puppies. That's Baxter and that's Bella. And we are going to create a registration program for them. Now, over here, we've got a program. This is the main program. Now, I am not going to create my object in the main program. I'm going to create it separately. And the reason for that is because it's very easy then for me to reuse that code. Maybe later on, I'm going to design another program which uses the same information and does the same things um, that this program uh, needs the dog object to do. And then all I have to do is use that file and put it into that program, that special class or unit file. Um, and th that makes my life a lot easier. We can then reuse our objects. Th that's why it's a good idea to put your objects in a completely separate unit. So we're going to go here and file, new unit. Wait, file, new unit. There we go. My mouse got away from me there. So let me go. Start new unit. And as you'll see, we've got a nice little unit over here. And this is where we are going to create our object. Obviously, because it's just a unit, there's no form attached to this. It's just simply a unit. Now, one of the first things I'm going to do when I create my object is I'm obviously going to have to give it a better name than just unit one. So I'm actually going to change it. Now, um, you can call it whatever you want. It's normally a good idea to have some sort of standardization of, of naming things just so that you are clear on what it is. So we're going to call it CLS S, so we know that it's a class, which is, as I said, another name for like an object in that. Um, and then we're going to have, call it dog, and we'll put underscore U so we know that it's a type of unit. Okay, and now that we've got that, it's probably a good idea for me to save this. So I'm going to save it, and I'm going to go put it into the folder where it, where the main program is. And we're going to give it the same name, so CLS dog underscore U. And this will be a pass file for a unit file. Okay, so we've created our um, naming convention. Now, under the interface, we are now going to create um, the details of the object. And we start with the word type. And then after type, we've type in, because obviously this is a type of object that we're creating, and we're going to give it a name. Now, a lot of people would just call it a dog, but it's going to be very difficult to get um, to understand what is a dog, what are other variable names. It's a good idea. If, you, if you've if seen the naming convention in Delphi, if you use a button, that's not necessarily a button. That's called a T button. So we're going to do the same thing over here and have a T dog object. Now, after we've given it a name, T dog, we're going to say it's of type class. Now, in brackets here, we're going to say what does it derive from? What what is the ancestor of this T dog? Because we can't just create a dog out of nothing. We've got to. It's got to be a descendant of something. And um, all objects are descendants of the T object. Not all of them are directly descendants of the T object. It just means that Delphi has created like a universal object called T object, and everything um, is is a descendant of T object. Um, so obviously we've got our object over here and it is of type of T object. Now a big mistake that a lot of people do is they tend to think, well this is a line of code in Delphi so we'll put a, a semicolon at the end. Please do not do that. That's going to make errors later on. It's quite difficult to pick up that error. So do not, do not put a semicolon after you've typed in what type of class you've got here. After you've done that, um, you should have a end for your type, and there we go. Now, once we've that's that's basically it. Now, inside here, we are going to have two different categories of information. We've got private and we've got public. Now, before I put what's in private and public, let me explain what that's all about. So under the private and the public headings, we are going to, the, this is where we're going to declare our attributes, or our variable names uh, for our object, and we're also going to declare the methods. Now, what do we put where? Now, it's normally a good rule to put your attributes under private. And the reason for this is because whatever is under private cannot be ac accessed or modified by other programs that are using the object. It can only be accessed or modified within the object. And you might say, why do we do this? Well, we want to be able to control what is being put into our attributes. So then you say, well, if we can't access those attributes from outside the program, then how do we change them and put values into these attributes? Well, that's where the public part comes in. And this is where we're going to put our methods. So we're going to create special methods that 
change our attributes or do certain things now because they will be under public they can be called by other programs so the other program can use the methods and then because we're using methods to put values into our attributes we can we have a little bit more control over what's going in so for example if, if a user is putting incorrect data or, or too much data we can do certain things like limit the information that's being stored into our attributes it just allows us a lot more control about the information that we're putting into the attributes so for just this lesson we are just going to put in our attributes now the attributes that we spoke about we wanted the name now it's a good idea as a good as with we've done before is to have a good naming convention we're going to have all our attributes start with the letter f so we're going to have name and if you think about it that will probably be some sort of string and you declare what type it is and then we're going to declare some sort of age variable um, so I think that'll be nice to have as an integer and then we're going to have the weight attribute and this we can store maybe it's a half a kilogram so let's to be safe let's let's make it a real now there we go that's as easy as it is we have literally just created our object we first of all named our object we then wrote type and then the name of our object so we called it a t dog it's a good idea as i said to have that naming convention and it is a descendant of the object the T object is a descendant of that. And then we have our private and our public um, or fields or attributes or methods. And we've decided that we're going to put all our attributes under private so that only this program, this unit, can access them. We are going to use them via the public methods, the functions and procedures, and that will be done via, um, as I said, the public methods, which those ones will be able to be accessed by the other program, this program that we are going to write this object for. So this has been part one. Um, tune in for part two where we'll create the methods that we will use in our object and then we'll actually see how do we actually use our object in this program where we keep details of the dog show. This video has been brought to you by Study Opportunities. They have the example that I'm busy going through in their textbook. If you haven't got a textbook or if you want to tell your teacher to get a good textbook, um, have a look at www.studyopportunities.co.za. There are details about how you can order all their books, and this is both for IT and for CAT. Please feel free to go to our YouTube channel to have a look at all other videos in this series as well as other videos on RT and CAT education. Um, as I said, it's, there's the link. Also follow us on Twitter. And remember that you mustn't do it the long way. You must do it the Mr. Long Way.